Hey everyone, real quick, I had a conversation this week with a good friend, colleague, mentor, uh, who we got into it around systems thinking. And when I've used the word systems thinking in the past, I'm often talking about uh, the, the business process element, um, the business process re-engineering piece, um, and, and we'll use systems thinking as a kind of catch-all for that part of what it is that we do. But the conversation that I was having with Rob was actually about like bigger picture, finding uh, systems thinking approaches to problems. So uh, I, I would also sort of describe this as more holistic thinking. And uh, we, we had this really interesting conversation. We we're talking about, for me, it's a particular feeling and the way that it makes my brain work. Uh, it's, there's this level of uncertainty. There's, uh, there's a calm that kind of comes over me and in, in, in the way that I'm thinking through things. And there's almost this, this leaving space for things to come up. It, it's quite a specific feeling, which is hard to, hard to put into words and describe for you on video. But, um, but it's, it's a recognizable pattern that I've seen. And so the examples that I've come into contact with, with the, of, of where people have taken systems thinking approaches to things are, number one, all that stuff I preach about listening to customer demand and going and understanding what's important to your customers and then acting on that, that all comes from an amazing group of people um, who I had the very great privilege to learn a little bit from um, and then try and go and apply myself and probably butch it entirely. Uh, but the Vanguard method uh, John Seddon's work around freedom from command and control, the books that he's written, I was very privileged to work with a group of people who uh, had come out of John's organization and were coaching us through the application of some of these techniques in businesses. And, and so systems thinking in that context was really about how do we understand what it is that our customers are asking of us? And there's a whole bunch of observational techniques that go along with that. Uh, and I've, I've I've taught those in the past. I've got freebies out where you can you can go and start to learn some of these things. Uh, but that's that's kind of at the core of a lot of what I teach. But the really cool thing about the that systems thinking piece is that it's not just about what's up front. It's about how does that wrap through the entirety of our organisation. And so uh, I'm almost certainly doing a discredit to say that. <laughs> The systems thinking in, in relation to the Vanguard method is largely around understanding what customers are asking for and then working through the impact on our business processes as a result. So understanding what those processes are today, understanding where we are adding value to customers, where we're not, and then re-engineering and redesigning that process and that business as a result of having understood what mattered to customers. So that's the that systems thinking in, in the context of understanding customer and then lining up all of our, our business process, the work that we do towards that. So there is an overarching, uh, there is an overarching guiding principle and then there is this looking at an organization end to end, this holism in trying to understand the entire way we operate, the entire way a customer transcends through all of those different business units to get what it is that they actually need out of us, um, how that all hangs together. So it's about bringing this holistic view to the way that work flows through an organization, the way that the processes happen, the way that we can re-engineer processes to get better outcomes for our customer, and funnily enough, better outcomes for our business as well. So that's systems thinking in, in one context. And then one of the other models that I work with uh, and for those of you that have been on a retreat with me, you will have been exposed to David Cantor's work. So uh, David Cantor wrote some amazing books and, and built a framework around communication. It's a model and a tool that I've used for a number of years now, and I love it to bits. Uh, I credit David's work with, uh, you know, he really taught me to meet people where they're at. And what was funny was I was digging into one of his books again this week and realized that he has this fascination and this all this learning that's come from many other systems thinkers that were around at the time. He's had direct contact with them and then what he's done is actually applied the systems thinking, uh, this way of thinking, this holistic thinking to communications. And so when we talk about his work with the four-player model, uh, the, the Cantor Institute, the, the structural dynamics work that he's done, what what he's been able to do is take this systems thinking methodology and apply it to 
communication. And that's come through a, a whole bunch of work that he's done with families and, uh, and sort of family counselling type work um, and couples and being able to pull together a framework and a model that works both in our personal lives but also in our professional lives. And as I say, I, I credit his work with helping to teach me how to meet people where they're at. Uh, it's fascinating to watch. But as I was talking to Rob, I was sort of explaining this and I was saying it's the it's the same stuff. It makes me feel the same way. It does something similar in my brain. And we talked about the idea that in a lot of this work, what's happening is that we're actually starting to abstract from the individual to the pattern. Now, this is something that I've worked with a lot with leaders. It's, it's not an unfamiliar conversation with, with, for me to have with a number of them around, well, what's the pattern that you're seeing? And what was really cool was that with talking with Rob, I realized that that ability to go from the individual to the pattern, that ability to go from what's the individual context to what's the framework is absolutely a precursor for your ability to think holistically, for your ability to think with the broader context, for your ability to be able to apply yourself in those more complex and chaotic environments that Dave Snowden talks so much about. And as, as we were talking, I, I relayed this example of um, another colleague that I was talking to this week who had just watched Sea Spiracy, which has come out on Netflix. Um, and uh, we've, we've had lots of jokes ongoing. So uh, this person is a total carnivore. He's a chef. He's an amazing person. Love him to bits. And um, we had a lot of banter about my plant-based diet. Um, and that's, that's all well and good. But he came into the office after watching this documentary and he says to me, I went into it thinking that it was going to be about plastic in the ocean. And I've walked away and said, I almost went vegan after watching that documentary. And so we had a really good giggle about that. And, um, and, and I was talking to him and, and also to Rob about the fact that, you know, for so many people, they come into contact with these things and then see a bigger picture. And there's a number of documentaries out there at the moment around reducing meat consumption um, as, as a way to reduce greenhouse emissions. Uh, there's documentaries about regenerative farming that's going on, saying that if we can heal the soil, then that's going to solve all of our climate woes. Uh, this particular documentary that's just come out saying, stop eating fish, then we're going to stop polluting the ocean with plastic, but actually we're going to stop the slavery that goes along with those working conditions, and there's better outcomes for the climate because we're going to heal the ecosystem. And I was talking with Rob about the fact that for anybody who comes into this with quite an analytical mindset, then all of a sudden you've got three or four different people saying these are the one these are the thing this is the one thing that's going to solve this huge problem that we've got around climate change and um, and it feels very familiar to the conversations that I have with leaders in business it's like we've got this complex chaotic system that's going on it's a it's a multifaceted problem to try and understand and solve and every person that comes to me has their thing as the way to solve the thing um, and, and their thing is the one thing that's going to make all of the difference. And what I've realized is that my entire education process, I've been taught to think really analytically. This is totally a Western culture thing. Um, this is by, by no means um, any, this is no, nobody's fault. This is, just, this is the way that we work. And so we've cultivated these work environments where we want to go and find the one thing. We want to, we want to drill down and break it down and get to root cause and then solve the one thing and we want the one thing that's going to solve all the problems and whilst there is an element of doing one thing to have a, an, a broad impact what I realized is that what it actually does is that when we're presented with a number of big things that are supposed to solve the problem it can feel like we're getting pushed and pulled there's total overwhelm like which thing do you choose everybody's got a solution but that through the training that I've had around thinking systemically, whether it be in business process and communication and other facets of my life, I'm able to appreciate that these things are all the one thing and at the same time put all of those one things together and say, yeah, they are all the answer. They are the answer on their own and they are all the answer. And that's that shift around being able to think think systemically. That's that shift around holistic thinking and being able to carry in your head the cognitive dissonance that goes along with having multiple solutions, the complexity in the environment, understanding 
um, to some degree the impact that one thing will have on many different aspects, that's what it means to think, to, to do systems thinking. That's what it means to think holistically. Uh, and, and this is really where we've got to get to. So how do we do it? Well, as I talked further with Rob, we, we really got down to that first thing that you can do, that, that one thing, that first thing that you can do to start to train your brain to work in this way, to start to untrain all of that learning around analytical and break it down and, and looking for silver bullets. Like we live in a world where there are no silver bullets. There's, you're not going to have one thing that has a massive impact anymore. It's about building that incremental capability, that capability to continue to deliver and continuous improvement. We've been talking about this stuff for years, right? So it's the one thing that you can do to improve your own ability as a leader, your team's capability today. The one thing that you can start to do is start to train your brain around understanding the difference between what's happening at the specific, at the discrete, at the individual level, and what that pattern looks like at a bigger picture. You stop looking for the individual things, start looking for the patterns. It's the first step, it's the one thing that you can do today that's going to encourage your team to start to think bigger picture, start to think more strategically, to start to think in this more holistic way. It's about looking for patterns. It's a method that I've been applying with my, uh, with my businesses and with my teams for a long, long time. But it's something that you can do today that's going to start to step you out of what's the immediate circumstance that I'm dealing with, what is the pattern that we're trying to solve, and, and if the word pattern doesn't work for you, try and think about a framework. What's, because if you're thinking about patterns, you're able to codify and to put a framework around the types of things that you're doing. It's that switch, that switch into, rather than solving the specific, start to look for the pattern. Because if we can solve for the pattern, then all of those specifics start to drop away. So I hope you found that useful. Super conceptual for me this week. Um, apologies for that if I've just like left field and you've been left at the end of this wondering what the heck is this woman talking about. Um, by all means, please drop me your comments. Send me an email. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, wherever you are in the world today, I hope you have an awesome, awesome day. I'll see you again next week.